What's up, bitches? Episode 10 of The Nest with your least favorite host, Michael Keller. Uh, finally in double digits, and I gotta say, it feels good. Feels good to finally actually put in some work into something, kind of. <laughs> as much as, as you could call this work, I guess. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for listening, showing support, liking, subscribing, commenting, all that good jazz, all that stuff. Let me get my uh, water right here real quick. Uh, I don't know why I keep it so far away. But... Ah, very refreshing. Got about 20 minutes or so before class coming up. So I thought I'd bust out a quick podcast episode. It'll be a shorter one, probably, like I said, 20 minutes, so... Just going to go with the flow. Just did an episode last night with my friend uh, Zach. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. Uh, Talked about a lot of fun shit. Uh, Movies, of course, that's always a staple here on the nest. Um, College during COVID, if if that's what you want to call it. (coughs) College during Corona, I like that better. And then, like, food and stuff, because that guy eats like a maniac. And I don't mean a lot, I mean just strange things. Let me set down my water in another peculiar place. But yeah, so this is episode 10. Gonna have probably another guest on on the next episode. Um, gonna keep trying to do more, because I feel like we just talk about more fun shit. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's just easier to get into. Ugh, burping up these, oh, I just had two hot dogs. I get the Hebrew Nationals. I get the Jew hot dogs. The kosher ones, you know? I don't know why, but they're fucking good. I don't know what those Jews put in those damn hot dogs, but they're they're fucking prime. They're amazing. I tossed some, uh, I have this Kraft uh, four blend whatever Mexican cheese, and I tossed a little bit of that on top, just a little little sprinkling, a little... Uh, dazzle of cheese across the top. The only thing that was weird, though, is my dad gets those hot dog buns that are cut, like, on, like, the top instead of, like... Like, if you looked at the roll for a hot dog, it would usually be, like, kind of turned up and then cut in half, but he gets the ones that are cut, like, right down the middle, and that bothers me. Just aesthetically, it bothers me. And it also makes for, um... You have to open your mouth sort of wider, um, which I don't like. When I'm eating my hot dog, as if eating a hot dog doesn't seem kind of gay enough in a way. Just having to really be like, oh, 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 get, oh we get this in here. So yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with the open top hot dog buns. But uh, yeah, just had those, had a grilled cheese with ham earlier. That was fuego. Um, I'm looking now, I got... um. Got this little record collection next to me. I'm just going through them right now. I got really into it in uh, in high school, like senior year. Just because, like, I don't know. What is it, junior year that you can start driving? 15, 16. Yeah, it's like sophomore, uh, junior year. But then senior year is when I really got into it. And I would just drive all, all over to these different spots. I would pick up peculiar stuff, too. Like, I wouldn't always get... Like, I pretty much got, like, the basics for stuff I like. Like, I got, like, Dark Side of the Moon. I got, um... the fuck else is here? Oh, yeah, I got a, a an original from 1969, Led Zeppelin II, which I love. That's one of my favorite ones that I have. I have a couple Van Halens, some Pink Floyd in there. I'm a big singles guy, though. Big fan of the singles. I have, um, She's a Lady by Tom Jones. I forget, oh, My Way is on the back side of it, but, um, I fucking, that song is so great, uh, She's a Lady by Tom Jones. She's the kind you like to phone and take to dinner. I always thought that was a funny line, just take to dinner, I don't know why. And take to dinner. It's like, okay, Tom, you do that. In your fucking high heel boots. Weirdo. Nah, he's cool. What else? Do, oh, I also found this one here. Let me see if I can find it again and just read uh, some of the shit that's on this. It's um, 
It's a disco album, and it's a disco like compilation. So it's like all the, I guess, most popular uh, disco tracks of the time. Oh, here we go. Two records set, all original hits and stars. And it's just called Disco Fire. Who's on the front here? Peter Brown, Samantha Sang, Donna Summer, and the Tramps. Okay, okay. Oh, Donna Summers looks creepy in that picture. Holy shit, I totally forgot <laughs> this. Um, when you open it, first off, too, it comes with two records, and I only have one of them, which is fucking bogus. Hang on, I gotta put my mic on the stand. Thumb. Son of a bitch. There we go. Put that in there. All right. Disco Fire. Yeah, so I have record two. They have the Star Wars theme on here, which I don't know. I've watched Star Wars. I've heard the theme, and at no point did it make me want to fucking disco dance. Nor did the theme from Rocky. What? Those are both on the um, on the first record, which I don't have. <laughs> it goes um, Boogie Shoes by the uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band right to um, the theme from Rocky. And I can't think of a worse uh, transition from going to like, you know, doing the fucking point down and then up fucking dance, whatever you want to call that. Just the disco dance. The classic one to, like, I'm going to run up some stairs and punch people in the face uh, to the Rocky, Rocky song. I never got why they made Rocky such an idiot in those movies. Like, I get that he's like a boxer, and a lot of times I guess that can, like, uh, fuck with your head or just make you kind of slow. But he's, like, extra slow for some reason, and I never quite figured why that factored into the movie as much as it did because it's so hard like even though he can take your ass it's so, uh take it kick your ass it's so hard to take him seriously when he's just talking like this about it it's like hey don't talk to adrian or i'm gonna i'm gonna punch you in the mouth <laughs> it's just like shut the fuck up idiot you're not gonna do anything you're all good I'm going to punch you now. <laughs> he just gets extra retarded through every movie. By the end, he just has no clue what's going on. Just like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be so great. By, like, the last movie, he's totally fucking brain dead. <laughs> Yeah, like, each movie, like, when he yells Adrian, it just gets worse and worse. Like, the first one's like, Adrian, Adrian. And by the end, he's just like, Adrian. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway. Yeah, they got the Rocky, <laughs> Rocky theme on here. Yeah, Mickey and Baxter. <laughs> 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 Fuck. But, uh, yeah, I don't know why they have the Star Wars, uh, Star Wars theme on here, too. Very undisco kind of movie. Like, Luke, I want you to boogie. <laughs> he just cuts his fucking hands off. <laughs> um, yeah, but I have disc two in here. I just found this song in here. I think I put it... I don't even know. I put a bunch of those songs that I like in the last episode. Um, There's only like three, but I don't think this was one of them. But it's Daz um, by Brick, which is sh uh, short for disco jazz, for those who didn't know. I didn't know that until I looked up the lyrics. But then on the inside of this fucking record, they have... um, it, It's uh, instructions. Like, you open it, and then across both, like... Like the spread or whatever, I guess you could call it, is um, instructions, uh, sixteen part instructions for how to do the hot chocolate, and it says put some fire into your disco, learn to do the hot chocolate, and looking at the dance, uh, nothing about it, of course, makes me think, oh yeah, like if you just saw it without knowing, you'd be like, oh fuck, you know what the. That's that's the hot chocolate, no? 
It has nothing to do with drinks. Nothing. I see no beverages present. I see no warm cocoa in the mix. I just see a man and a woman in very ill-fitting pants. Oh, this guy's got them. I was talking about it on maybe like episode five about um, how uncomfortable and just silly 70s pants look, how they like ride all the way up to your belly button and are super tight at the waist, but then... I mean, I know, I know that they're like bell bottoms, that that's what they're called, but they just look like you're walking around with a wedgie constantly. And this chick's is like an overall version of it. She's got like, it looks like the pants and the shirt connect, but then it's like sleeveless at the top, and she's got this Fred from Scooby-Doo ascot on. And the guy, the guy's shirt, of course, is buttoned. There's maybe, it looks like there's literally only two buttons that you could even button on this shirt. Oh my God. Starting position. The, the hot chocolate, a 16 beat repeating line dance. This is the, this is only one of many disco dances you can learn from the new Let's Disco Dance Instruction book from k -Tel. Something seems very unnatural about learning dances from a book. <laughs> is that just me? Just having to like read out your dance just doesn't seem right. From k -Tel. Printed in the U.S. of A, baby. k -Tel from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Everyone knows Minnetonka, Minnesota is just the heart of... Um, that's the home of disco. If you want to put on your, uh, your dancing shoes and your uncomfortable elephant pants and big baggy shirt, Get a plane ticket and go to, the fuck is it called? I already forgot. Minnetonka, Minnesota. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sorry, I'm putting it back on my shelf. I also just randomly have like four, because like there was a bunch of stuff that I went out and actually bought, but then my parents had like some older stuff or they got, I forget where they got them from. But I just tossed them on my little shelf and I just have in the middle like five Beethoven. Ugh. Oh my god, hot dog burp. That's so gross. Fucking pig feet. And uh, whatever sh other shit they grind up in there. Horse skin. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, but I have a bunch of just like random Beethovens and shit in here. I also did um break my own cardinal sin of... um record buying and collecting and I bought one uh I bought a Black Keys album. Uh, it's just so stupid. Like I I don't get buying records for albums that were released way after records even became a thing. I mean, I guess I get it. Like it's it's kind of it can be cool depending on the album, but the only reason I really like records is because I just like um I don't know, I'm a nerd about it. I like thinking like, oh shit, like the reason the Led Zeppelin one is my favorite is because um, it's, like, from 1969. Like, I got to, you know, you're hearing what whoever bought that first, like, that was, so like, how you actually heard it. That's how it was released. You know, they didn't put their music out on fucking iTunes. It was on a record. And that's dope to me. But, uh, yeah, I did buy that one. I think that, did I? It might have been a gift. I don't know. I'm not trying to pass the buck. I probably did buy it, but um, that's on there. I'm looking at Van Halen 2 right now. Not the best album, but I do like the cover for it. What else we got? Ooh, this one. Uh, I have a Jimi Hendrix from like 69, too. I don't even like touching those ones because I'm just clumsy, so I feel like I'm going to fuck it up. Or when I put it back in its little protective sleeve, I'm going to somehow damage it even while I'm trying to to protect it and keep it nice. But, uh, yeah. I might, um, I might bust out some Switch right now. I've been playing a lot of Mario Tennis. Underrated game. Like, out of all the shitty Mario games that have been put out over the years, I feel like Tennis, it doesn't necessarily get a bad rap, but it, it doesn't get the respect it deserves as a, as a Mario and sports game. So I feel like tennis in general is a hard thing to make entertaining as a video game because it's a fucking boring sport in real life, too. But they pull it off pretty well, in my opinion. 
Like, there's a decent amount of uh, variety in the games and, like, the shit that you can do and the characters. I always I always like that game, uh, the, the Mario Parties. I like Mario Party 7. I feel like there's uh, that's the only one I've ever heard of. Like, where was, like, Mario Party 4? When did that come out? I've never heard of those ones. You know what? I'm going to fucking look it up right now. Mario Party Game Series. Yeah, Mario Party... Like, there's a bunch of just random ones with different names, but I'm not seeing... Like, if I do Mario Party... Just three. Mario Party 3, Nintendo... uh, Damn, initially released 2000. Holy fuck. That's honestly kind of later than I thought it was going to be. Let me do Mario. Let me just keep going through on Mario Party 4. What does it not exist? Oh, it switched to GameCube. That's sick. Wait, how late? How much later was that then? Cuz I that was one of the first game consoles that like I got. 2002. It really went from N64 to GameCube, just like that. Mario Party 4. I feel like these games never really change. Like, it's always just the same shit over and over. Princess Peach. What a bitch. Oh, man. I love seeing old graphics for video games. Back when they were very... um, When they were, like, dope... Like, I remember, like, the early NHL games when they would still be really blocky and have, like, the flat people in the crowd. And me and my brother would be like, oh, my God, look at that. But now that that's all they focus on, uh, kind of annoying. What's this Google thing? Oh, thank you, coronavirus helpers. Yeah. You didn't get no, fuck those people. Like, what? Obviously. Obviously, thank them. No one wants to fucking do this shit right now. My one friend's working at Target right now, and I i don't know how he's... I mean, money's money, I guess, but good luck's on him for even going into his shifts. I would not want to deal with the fucking idiots that both shop and uh, can work there. As a former employee, we had to do... Um, we had to do the dumbest fucking thing there one time. Uh, I asked him. I asked my friend too, and apparently he's never had to do this. So maybe it was just my um, luck to have to be at the store where they did this super lame fucking tradition. But um, f- first off, they did the thing where like, uh, there's no customers in the store; they're all guests. Like, okay, no, they're not coming over for like a dinner party, and I'm not serving them fucking. Uh, wine and cheese, they're not guests, they're customers. They're coming in and they're buying shit. That's literally what a fucking customer is. But anyway, um, we would have to do, like, anytime you did something with a, like, you interacted with a customer or they, like, helped you find, or you helped them find something, my bad. Um, It was called, like, actually, it wasn't called. What that's called is just working at a fucking store, and that's your job. But um, they wanted you at Target, or at the Target I worked, they wanted you to refer to it as, like, a vibe moment. Like, <laughs> like I don't know, like, you were just, like, ripping a bowl with a customer or, like, sharing some beers. Like, it was a vibe moment they wanted it to be. Which none of them were, because, like I said, it's literally just like, oh, excuse me, where's the um, where's the laundry detergent? Oh, it, aisle C4 right, right down there. Uh, okay, thank you. It's, you didn't vibe, okay? Like, like, were you, like, hitting on them? It's not a vibe moment. That's working at a store. But anyway, every week, I, I think it was, like, on Wednesdays, or, or maybe it was every day and just at a certain time. I think it was because I always worked around the same time because I worked there in high school, so I, it was always between, like, 4 and maybe, like, 10 o'clock, something like that. And at some points in the... But I wouldn't have to do it if I worked, like, on weekends, like, in the morning and shit. So I'm guessing it was by time. But anyway, they would call you over the stupid little walkie-talkie, which half the time I would always just forget to fucking turn on because right when I would get there, like, they would always be like, excuse me, we need some people to come up to the registers. Just dumb shit. Or um, 
you would even hear like some people would chime in like, oh, I just had a, a great moment with a guest. I um, helped them find the cat food. It's like, yeah, nice. You can go eat that with them later, fucking weirdo. But um, they would have us get in the in the center of the circle or in the center of the store, go in a circle, and that we would do like a vibe check kind of. Like they would go around and they'd be like, all right, now everyone, like if you had a really good moment um, with a customer, if you had a really good vibe, um, just, you know, please share it with us. We, we want to know as, you know, your team leaders. That was another thing. They weren't like managers. They were team leaders. It's just so condescending. Like it just makes you hate all the people there so much more. Um, cause you're like, I'm not on your fucking team. All right. Like you're my manager and I'm the employee, but, um, oh my God, the dumb shit that people would say in there. And it was literally like the examples I gave. Like, I remember so specific, this one guy was like, um, uh, so, so a guy came up to me earlier and he was asking, he was asking for razors. So, so I thought, and I, and I looked it up on, on my little pad and, and I showed him to the aisle and, you know, we talked for a second about it. And yeah, I, I, he said, thank you. And yeah, it was a really good moment. And I was like, that's not, that's your job, dude. That should, everything should be a vibe moment then. If just doing your job is a fucking vibe, moron. I hated doing that. I even had such a great um, moment with a customer too. But of course, I'm not going to bring it up in one of those stupid meetings. I'm just going to enjoy it for myself. But this um, older like Jewish couple came in. And don't even ask how I know that, but it was just, it was obvious in, in the voice and the, the look of the man. But, um, the, so this guy comes up to me. First off, it was a couple, but the guy made it there first. Like, he just fucking waddled over really fast. He was, like, short and kind of stout. Um, and then they started to explain to me how their daughter is, like, getting, is moving into their her first apartment or something. And I can't remember if they said it was, like, with a guy or not, like if it was uh, the girl and the boyfriend are moving in, I just farted. But um, I'm like, okay, yeah, like, so I was just assuming, you know, they're going to need household shit. Luckily, in most targets, you know, like everything's laid out, so it was pretty quick. Um, the mom had like the list. The dad was frantic for some reason. I, I don't know why. He was just fucking running all around as if she needed to be moved in in like the next 30 minutes. But um, so I'm talking to the mom because she has the list. This guy's just going off and doing his own fucking thing. So we get, you know, we knock off a couple items and it's just like soap, detergent. Um, I think uh, maybe like a snack or two. Um, then just like some parent, you know, home warming shit, like a lamp or whatnot. And then at one point, the dad comes up to me um, with his phone. I, I don't even know what he was looking at, but he was just like adjusting his glasses. And he's like... Um, he like gets in real close. He's like, I need, um, I need KY jelly. I was like, what? He's like, you look K KY jelly. I was like, like fucking lube. And he was, and he just kept repeating KY jelly to me until like I brought him over to the fucking section. All I could think was how strange would it be for your parents to move you into your apartment? And then, um, and I have a feeling just by the way this guy was doing it, he was probably, like, it's not like something that, like, they'd move her in and they would just, you know, he'd, like, throw it in the nightstand for her to just find eventually. <laughs> it's just secret lube from her dad. But I could totally see this guy just going down the list with, like, I got you, I got you the detergent, the laundry shit, uh, your lube. <laughs> it is so fucking funny. I love that guy. That made me, like, like, I was trying not to laugh in his face. And not even laugh at him, just laugh at, like, the situation of just buying your kid a thing of lube. <laughs> just, like, just for his dry pussy daughter, I guess. But, um, oh, man. All right, I'm seeing now that I got class. It's got to start, so. This has been episode 10. I really enjoy doing these shorter ones, honestly, because I don't have to think as much. But, um, yeah, finally double digits. This is The Nest. Like and subscribe means a whole lot to me. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you on episode uh, 11. Deuces. It, oh, my God. It doesn't fucking end the recording. Here we go.